Hey, Decide Your Destiny crew. Thanks for joining me. Today, we've got a very good friend of mine, someone that I actually spent a bit of time with in a, in a photography course um, for about a year, studying uh, alongside and, and getting to know. And we're crossing the borders again. She's over in Sydney. I'm in um, okay. Western Australia. So, you know, I want to introduce you guys to Ellen. She is a photographer, author, and brain surgeon survivor. So, Ellen, take it away. Hi, Kyle. How are you going? Good, Hello from good. Sydney. It's Hello. hot here today. Yes, yes. It's late afternoon there, isn't yeah. it? Uh, what time is it here? Yeah, it's 20 to 4. What time is it there? Uh, 12.40. Yeah, 12.40. 12. Yeah, I always forget the uh, the time difference between – and I have a friend who lives in Perth. I message him at, you know, 8 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never get a response. But, yeah, yeah. no, it's, and it's warm here today. It's finally warm after a few weeks of rain, so it's yeah. good. That's good. That's good. Um, well, so, so tell us a little bit about, I guess, your book, I guess, to jump straight, straight into it. So I love the, the, the title Magnificent Now. Um, and, you know, that's the title of the photography. You know, it's like, you know, I, I love, I, I really do enjoy photography names that are a little bit more, um, have a little bit more story to them. You know, yeah. like, uh, I think mine would have been quite hard. Kyle Spreedy's photography, people would have gone, what how do you say that last name like, yeah. like what's going on there and i think people you know so many people today have so many interesting last names but i just like when there's a different name to a business so so maybe you yeah. can explain a little bit about where your name uh, came from for your business you know i think uh, when we was oops sorry i think when we were um studying photography yeah if I look at the, like your journey very much starts when you finish yes is it, you know, you think you know what you want to do, but when you actually get out into the reality of it, you, yeah. you try different things and, you know, it's not the industry you thought it would be or you can't mm. get work in it or it's not the kind of lifestyle that you want. Yes. So um, when we were studying photography, I really wanted to do fashion because I think it's, yeah. you know, it can be the most stylish and beautiful photography and I love portraits. Yes. Um, I do actually have Ellen Photography which is my portrait business, but yes. I don't put my surname because it's just too hard. Yeah, yeah. And my first name, Ellen, E-L-Y-N, is hard enough. And I was yeah. like, just Ellen Photography <laughs> for that. But yeah. with um, with this one, um, this all came about because about three years ago now, I um, quite just by chance, we found that I had a giant unruptured brain aneurysm. Wow. So when I say giant, it was... Um, I think 23 centimetres, oh, sorry, 23 millimetres, okay. um, so like 2.3. Yeah. And, um, yeah, yeah. then they're normally about 3 to 4 millimetres yeah, in wow. size, aneurysms, and when they rupture, you know, people can drop dead from them, um, you can be paralysed, you can have a stroke. Uh, so the fact that mine was 23 centimetres, it was classified giant. I thought they were joking when they actually said giant, but apparently that's the medical term. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, wow. so we found, we found, luckily found it by chance. And um, so I was able to sort of get booked in for brain surgery where the only way that they could fix it was to pretty much go in and try and like clip it and cut it and, and get it out so that it didn't burst and I would have a brain, a brain bleed. Mm. so I had um uh, like it was actually really terrifying being told look you know I mean having anything that size in your head that shouldn't be there is is really terrifying but yes. um I had I think five weeks before I had to go in for the surgery mm. and in that five weeks like I was uh, I was terrified. Like, I think I didn't breathe properly for about three days. I couldn't sleep. I wasn't having night sweats, things like that. And I just sort of, um, I needed uh, some kind of, I guess you call it maybe a coping me mechanism. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it was, um, you know, I thought, okay, well, I'm going to go through this. I want to go through it because I want to live and I want, you know, I don't want to just drop dead if it ruptures. Mm -hmm. So how am I going to get through this? And my way of getting through it was to focus on something positive every day. So it didn't have to be huge. It didn't have to be massive. I just wanted to take a photograph, usually on my phone or with my camera, of just something that I thought was beautiful or inspiring every day. Love that. And um, because then that way it just gets your focus, you know. Yes. And at the same time, you kind of realise how many 
beautiful parts of life there actually are. So yeah. as an example, uh, you know, I would go to my favourite bookshop. I would go to my nearby park and the light was really pretty in the trees that day. Uh, I would eat my favourite meal. Um, I would go for a walk down by the harbour. So like all of these things, they're just small everyday things, but it just helped me to focus on um, the beautiful parts of life and just focusing in the moment. Yeah. So I don't know if you feel the same way, but as a photographer, like when I'm shooting, I am just so completely in the moment. Yes, yeah, exactly, yeah. 100%. And I, th- I think that's, that's so beautiful what you decided to do. Like you decided to take charge of that time and mm. go what, what is going to be that, you know, that, 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 fish, that fish line that's going to keep me going, keep me positive, keep me focused, and it's going to yeah. be that positive, you know, and changing the reality because, you know, I think especially we can look at today, people have so many different realities. I mean, I was just talking to yeah. someone before I, I got on with you and, and they were chatting to me and they were saying, oh, you know, um, talking about truth. And I, and I just said, you know, well, people have all sorts of different truths. You know, like yeah. it's not, it's not, you know, one person's going to be way over here and one person's going to be way over there. And, yeah. you know, I think, and you can look, you can go, walk around Sydney and go, this place is grimy, it's dirty, it's yeah. ugly. Or you can walk around and go, wow, this place is beautiful, it's inspirational, it's lovely. And I think when you've got that camera in hand, there's yeah. something so beautiful about it that actually makes you look for if, if it's a grimy scene, you want to capture it because there's something yeah. that grabs your attention and you absolutely. just get excited about your city or your whatever, you know, wherever you are. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think when, for me, when I have a camera in my hand, the, the world just gets so much more interesting. Yeah. Because yeah. I've got, I'm going looking for something yeah. that's interesting. It doesn't necessarily have to be beautiful. It, yeah. it could be interesting patterns all over the, uh, uh, the footpath yeah. in the city. It could even be a scene which is not pretty as such, but it's just really interesting because of yes. the way the light's playing or the shadows are kicking back or, yeah. um, you know, or I think as well, like when you're on holidays, everything's beautiful to you because you're on holidays and you're going, you want to see everything fantastic about this city. Why can't you do that where you live? Yeah, yeah, that's so true. You take it and I, I know when I, when I took my camera on holidays, part of it was like a little bit of a concern like because I was so it was just after we finished um uh, our course um yeah. and I, I went to um, South America for the first time ever and then I went um I've got family in South Africa so I went back home to South Africa so I, I visited those two places um South Africa first went on a, a safari you know traveled nice. and uh, but but there's a video where there's all these elephants and they're recording this video and you can just hear this click click <laughs> Click, click, and I'm just going like mad, and yeah. and you know, and 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 so, and then when I went to South America, it was the same thing. But those trips, I think for me, were so incredibly rich, and they still, mm. you know, I filled up hard drives. I took, I took way too many photographs. Like I went nuts. Oh yeah. But yeah, as you do, but I just, uh, they were just so more incredibly rich, and I think you experienced the moments yeah. a lot more, and you experienced them in a lot higher of a present level because yeah. you weren't thinking about, you know, some family member that texted you something or, um, you know, like negative or maybe some something bad about here. You were just, you're constantly engaged and interested. You know, you're yeah. constantly engaged. And if you think about us as children, um, that's that's what we are. You know, we're constantly engaged, yeah. we're constantly interested, we're con- constantly curious, you know. Yes. You, you wouldn't have an elephant in front of you and go, you know, and it blowing its trumpet and go, I'm um, bored and you know jump on your phone or something yeah. like that you'd be like wow and you'd be watching yeah. looking at its details looking at every movement looking at its tasks yeah you'd be really embracing it so but the fascination is there you know I think as adults we lose our fascination with things and yes. um like having a little girl now she's she's not far off being two but yeah. she like essentially she doesn't know what she's missing you know, her whole world is is what's around here and everything yeah. is fascinating to her when we go outside and you know, we walk the road and it, like it's all sticks, uh, you know, sticks are exciting and stuff yeah. like that. But, I mean, I think, look, I love to travel, but we don't always have the opportunity. So, for example, like when I had the brain surgery, my recovery was uh, like a minimum of a year. So I could, I could physically function, but mentally I couldn't. Um, it's, it's hard to describe. Like I think inside I knew what I was thinking, but I couldn't get it out necessarily with what I was saying, or I just Mm. had this fatigue 
Yeah. Like I couldn't read a book like I used to, even if it was an easy read, I just couldn't mentally, mm. you know, stay focused on things. And so, you know, I couldn't travel and then you've got hospital expenses and things like that. But I just thought, again, like there are times in life where we can't travel. So what do you do? Do you sit around saying, oh, you know, I hate where I am. Everything's boring. Everything's crap, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I thought if, you know, some people are saving up to travel to where I live, <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. to see all the amazing things where I live. And so I think that's kind of how my book name or my sort of business name for Magnificent Now came out because it is about the Magnificent Now. Yeah, it's not about the magnificent tomorrow or when I achieve this or when I do like when to me like I was saying before when I'm behind my camera I'm so present I'm so you know looking at that thing yes. at that time or where I am and I think quite often too when I um, look at my photos I remember how I felt on that day when I took that picture so I think that's another thing that we have with photography is that you look at the image but when you took it you remember how you felt when you look at that image. There's a lot of yeah. feeling related to our images. Yes. And I know that's different when other people look at, they have a different feeling or maybe they don't know what you felt when you took it. Hmm. Um, but what you were saying before as well about, um, you know, the um, different truths. Yeah. There's no one truth. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that like they, they say, you know, you get two people that will tell you what happened in a situation. You get two completely different realities. Exactly. And I think um, when we were talking before as well about what I was holding on to in yeah. order to get through um, my surgery, yeah, I think, uh, you know, I didn't, there's all this stuff in your mind, you know, there's, I've, I've been, you know, sorry, I feel like I'm, I'm trying to grasp at all different thoughts, but no, no, you, ha okay. you have a consultation and you have to have these conversations about, okay, well, you know, in the surgery, this is what we're going to do. And, you know, look, there's a possibility you could end up part paralyzed if something goes wrong in the surgery and you have a brain bleed, you could be completely and utterly shut down like you're alive inside but dead physically. Yeah. Um, you could die and, you know, I would, uh, my husband was with me or my fiancé was with me at the time. So we had to have this conversation about, well, you know, if, if I am sort of uh, completely shut down, you know, do you want to switch me off? Yeah. So we had just gotten engaged. I think oh, we got engaged long. six weeks before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we're kind of thinking about the rest of our lives together and then this happens and then we're yeah. having these conversations. And I was like, you know, I don't want to sit around thinking about what could go wrong. Um, yeah. I'm realistic, you know. Yeah. I do understand these things could happen. And, you know, if that does happen, this is what we've decided and these are the steps I'll have to take. But until then, I caught up with all my friends. I caught up with my family. I went to my favourite places. I read my favourite books. Uh, I probably spent way too much money online buying everything I, <laughs> I wanted to buy. Photography <laughs> gear, yeah. Oh, yeah, photography yeah. gear. I ordered so many books like Amazon yeah. just kept coming in every day. Yeah. <laughs> um, you supported them, eh, for their growth. <laughs> I did, yes. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think my truth was, or, you know, if you want to call it my truth, it was that, um, you know, life life is beautiful. I'm going to enjoy it however long I've got. Yeah. So that was sort of, and, and for me it was like doing it through my camera because I am, I'm very much a creative person. So everything I do channels through creativity in somehow. Yes. So um, for me it was photography and that's how my book came about because yeah. it was, this place that I love and I didn't grow up in Sydney I actually um came from a couple of hours north in a very quiet sleepy coastal town that was actually uh it was very restrictive and very negative when I was growing up there yeah. and um I sort of couldn't get out fast enough so I think when yeah. I was 19 and I came to Sydney uh, I was just in awe, you know, cafes yeah. are open, there's wonderful films coming in from overseas and people are here, they're ambitious, they want to go travelling, they go out at night, you know. Yeah. Um, and I they still live. feel the same way. Yeah. They live. They're yeah. alive. Yeah. yeah. They're alive and they're ambitious and they're, you know, come along, come join us, we're going to do this or that. Um, yeah. And I think I still see Sydney with the same rose-coloured glasses. Awesome. Yeah, so, exciting, yeah. exciting place, exciting, yeah. I mean, yeah. I know. I know when I moved here, when I moved to Perth from Sydney, um, every a lot of young people that I met, they said, you know, like 
my gosh, you moved from Sydney to Perth. Like, you know, what, what are you doing? Like, you know, it, that's, yeah. Mecca. that's Mecca <laughs> over there, you know. Yeah. I was trying to tell tell people like, wow, like, but do you know what you have in Perth? Like you've got so yeah. much, you know, like I can drive five minutes to the beach and then 15 minutes to the centre of the city and then, yeah. you know, and, and, and my rent is, you know, like a third of, of yeah. you know, I'm, I'm able to <laughs> yeah. take the steps to make it out, you know, and, 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 you know, it's not all about that. I mean, you know, like little things like the traffic as well. Like, I don't know, it was just such a thing that, that, you know, not seeing so many cars on the road was just like, it just made me so happy. Like it was, yeah. it was yeah, strange, yeah. but, <laughs> but, you know, and, and, and there were different things, you know, I wanted a different, a different change, but I was just trying to tell people, you know, where you are is beautiful. Like, embrace mm. this place like yeah it doesn't have everything yes there's things that it needs to um fix yes there's there's problems that they need to they, they, they need to sort out and we need to sort out as a community and a government and and, and and a culture you know of course yeah. um you know but but with, with that in mind there's so much here to embrace you yeah know? and, and that, I, I think uh, it's um i think it's a, a balance like um if there's somewhere that you don't want to be that's okay like find somewhere else that you do want to be Um, but at the same time I think you have to kind of try and figure out where you're happy and where you're not so for example I love um, everything cultural so for me being near the city like I've actually moved a little bit away from the city I'm still in like the uh, Sydney region yes but you know on the central coast there weren't galleries there weren't bookstores movies came six to eight weeks after they were showing in Sydney and we're only like 90 minutes away yeah but it was just um you know nothing was open and things like that so I needed to be somewhere that was a little bit more uh cultural I guess yes but at the same time um you know I can appreciate the beauty of the central coast but do I want to live there no I don't you know because I need to find somewhere where I fit yeah but you know, I used to live very close to the city and I was just like, God, I can never get a car space when I go home and it's always busy and blah, blah, blah. So I've now moved and I'm surrounded by trees, but then I'm still only half an hour from the city. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So yes. I think it's kind of like it's appreciating where you are, but it's also understanding when you need to get out and need to move on or just make a change because otherwise you do end up getting really miserable because you're like, oh, nothing happens here. I hate it. Mm. And, you know, I don't want to be that kind of person. I'd rather like try and find where I want to be. Yeah, and then yeah, like Sydney's got its problems. It is, yeah. well, everywhere has its problems, yes. really. Yeah, but um, I, this is where I want to be. Yes, everything is. So yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that's um, you know, I think that's uh, you know, when you get people that come in from overseas and they they come to your city, you become like this instant tour guide, and you like you're instantly really excited. I know, like I get yeah. a lot of friends and family saying, you know, I want to make it over to Perth and visit you. And for me, that excites me because I'm like, well, you know, I'd love to show you around. Like, I'm really keen to show you around um, and make sure you kind of get the feel, the energy of, you know, Perth. And I think you're right. What you said there is that when you're stuck and it's the same thing if you're stuck in a job, if you're stuck in um, a place, whatever it is, I think human beings were a big part of us in our DNA is to be productive and to be moving forward and to be, um, you know, like, working in something that we feel like is really you know shifting us forward so yeah. i think it's the same thing if you're in the same location for so long um you know it can get a bit you know i guess mundane or a bit boring or a bit and that's where, where people come and they see and they well, why aren't you enjoying it and it's like you need to either um shake it up or like you know get some activity to it um or yeah. you need to like you said try and take it in a little bit more present, like, you know, enjoy, enjoy the now. And uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I think it's also about perception again. So, you yeah. know, if you're stuck where you are, you can try and change your perception by yes. like doing what I did, go out with your camera, trying to find something beautiful every day, something simple, something is interesting to you, uh, something purple, something red, you know, there's so many different like projects that you could do or, um, you know, or go out and try a different cafe each day, get a, cup of coffee at a different cafe each day that's what you like to do or explore a new area in your suburb so there's like ways you can change your perception but I think as well I'm very um to me one of my biggest traits is proactivity so Mm. you know I I just think if you're not happy somewhere just think about you know how you can change it so I mean I've, I've known people who are miserable in their jobs and this is, you know, 10 years going, 20 years going, and 
and you know some people will say oh, I can't afford to leave or uh, you know like I'll you know I really would like to do something else but I can't do it whereas mm. to me like being positive if you will is being proactive so for example if you if you want to um you know if you can't afford to actually move from what you're doing can you come up with a savings plan mm. so that you can put something away each week you know maybe it's not having a coffee every day it's just putting that away or um for example one of my friends you know she was so under the hammer in her job mm. but then you know she'd say look i've got no skills i can't no no one else will employ me and i just thought she was selling herself short to start with, but then I just thought, you know, there's all kinds of TAFE courses that you can do at night. Yeah. And there's uh, a lot of online courses that you can do on how to sort of get new computer skills and stuff like that. Yes. So, you know, if you just chip away at that, yeah. you know, once or twice a week for six months, in six months' time, little by little, you've upskilled. Yeah. And then you can move for, you know, like coming up with a plan to actually move forward and get out of that. To me, that's like positively affecting a negative situation. Yes, exactly. Um, so I kind of either take one of those views, you know, I either got to try and like find some joy where I am with mm. what I'm doing or I've got to make a plan to change it because yeah. I don't want to be some miserable complaining person that, you know, other people can't wait when they leave the room, you know, that kind of thing. So Yeah, and, and yeah. I think in that state you're not, you know, and, you know, we, we, like, we can all go through those times where we're struggling and, and, and you know, it's hard for us to see, you know, the brighter side, but I think you just got to think, you know, are you being productive? You know, are you being, are you adding value? Like, and, you know, adding value is not just a, a saying for business or, or, mm. you know, I think adding value is just a way of like life. That's the way I look yeah. at it. You know, are you, you know, what, what value you adding? And I, I don't look at it as like a chore. I just look at it. Let me be conscious. You know, I'm entering this room. Am I, bringing the room down or am I yeah. building the room up? Am I getting the worst out of people or am I trying to get the best out of people? You know, yeah. and, and I think that's, it's important. And, and we have so many opportunities. Um, like you said, you know, you, people can study night courses. They can, they can do so many different things. Um, yeah. And it's so good to have someone like you, a friend like you that can shift someone out of that mindset. And, and, and that's what it is. It's a mindset. It's an attitude shift. Yeah. Like you, you enjoy in Sydney even more, you enjoying your environment, you enjoying your life. It's literally an attitude change. And once you start mm. playing with that and working it out and go, I got up all flat and then I and then I changed my attitude and then you go, oh, yeah, maybe I can do that. Maybe I can do this. And then you just start building momentum. Yeah. Then, yeah. Sometimes all you need is the hope of it. Yes. Yeah. You yeah. know, because, you know, my day today is not as different, you know, that different to it was two months ago necessarily, but, you know, I felt better. Yeah. And that alone sometimes is enough. And I think what you were saying before about when you enter a room and, you know, can you <clears throat> lift it up or drag it down? I think it's being sensitive to how you're affecting other people. Yeah. Because we really do affect other people. And mm. I, I don't know how often people think about that. Mm. Yeah. You know, like so, some people I've spoken to, like they will complain to me for 25 minutes. Yeah. You know, they, there's this kind of expression about, uh, someone says, oh, you know, I've got a headache. And another person says, oh, yeah, I've got a brain tumour. You know, the boys get to have the, um, the upper not. hand and, yeah. yeah, or like they're not aware or maybe if you've got a headache, you're complaining to someone that has had a brain tumour and you're like, well, you know, things are a lot harder for other people. Yes. You know, but yeah. you're the one that's complaining and you're bringing them down. Exactly, exactly. So I think yeah, we've all got our moments, of course, but I think if you're that kind of person that you think, God, no matter what happens in their life, they're always complaining. Hmm. Um I mean, I, I think I, I don't want to be that person, you no. know, and I, I don't know if I can necessarily lift everybody up, but um, I don't know, like um, I'll be honest or, you know, I'll go in. I, you know, if there's a social occasion, I'm in a dreadful, dreadful mood. I'm probably not going to go. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because I think, you know, like, no, I'm not going <laughs> to go along and be in pain. And bring it, so, and bring it down. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think it's just being aware of, you know, how's this going to affect other people and, you know, just being sensitive to other people. Yes, exactly, exactly. And, you know, I think we should not, I think, I think a lot of people should, should or should realise how, in, how inspirational they can be to each other in terms mm -hmm. of you might just say the right thing at the right time or you mm -hmm. might, you know, uplift someone you know, and you might not know that that person, you know, was two negative things away of, you know, doing something terrible. Like you can, 
you can yeah. really be a, a strong, empowering um, shift for someone, you know. Yeah. And I think that's that we shouldn't think, underplay that. I'm sorry. We, 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 well, I just think we shouldn't yeah. underplay that, you know. No, and I think there's, uh, I can't explain it necessarily, maybe it's serendipity, but, you know, sometimes you have a conversation with a person and it's just at that moment you really needed to hear it. It could be like a stranger you just spoke to in the street yeah. or, um, you know, you do, you come across somebody and you just say something, whether that's, you know, oh, geez, you know, I really love the shirt you're wearing or something. And you just lifted them at a time that they really needed that. Um, yes. So, I mean, I've experienced that a lot and and I so I think there's some truth in it that, um, you know, li- those little things can sometimes be at a time when somebody really needs it. I, I think that's important. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, you've obviously got such an inspirational story um, and I really love what you've done and I love that photograph of Sydney actually. I, it's really sticking out at me. Um, it looks very, I don't know, to me it looks very like spiritual and like ambient and, yeah. you know, like godlike or something. So. Yeah. So, yeah, so I was wondering if you could tell me like a little bit of the process because, you know, you're combining obviously, um, you know, like a lot of the inspiration going through that health challenge that you went through, you know, your, your love and passion for photography and then also now writing and creating you know, a new creative product or element. So, so okay. t- tell me how, how, that, how that went, how that went about. Well, I, um, I always wanted it to be a pictorial book. Yes. I guess, you know, you might as well pursue what you love. And so for me, books and having it as a pictorial book was what I was most passionate about. But I felt as well like I wanted to make it a bit more personal mm-hmm. and have um, just a few pages of sort of describing what I love about Sydney or my experiences in Sydney in each one of those chapters. Yeah. So I've got nine chapters. There's just a few pages at the front of each one sort of describing memories I have or like why did I photograph this topic? So, for example... I have a, um, a chapter on light. So yes. I think one of the most magnificent things about Sydney is that we have incredible light. Yeah. And we also have quite amazing storms in yeah. Sydney too because we're sort of tropical. Yes. So I have a lot of picture, pictures of uh, different lighting situations over the harbour. Some of it's fog, some of it's like heavy storms, some of it's that beautiful sort of quintessential um, Sydney sunlight that you get bright and blue but then also like sunset there is gorgeous. It's pink, it's purple, it's those beautiful dark colours. Mm. So I wanted to sort of um, write a little bit about, you know, or why did I put this chapter in the book? And another um, thing that I wanted to be different about my book too was that Sydney I think is always known as a sort of like a beach place yeah. and Sydney beaches and things like that. And I thought, well, that's not my Sydney. My Sydney is the streets and the parks and the gardens and the culture and again like yeah. the light because it's so magical yeah so um uh yeah and I would sort of write about my memories you know like why did I go to that street or you know what was exciting about it yes so that's uh yeah so it was predominantly pictorial but I just felt like the writing would complement the actual yes. so that's why I sort of went down that route beautiful and did you meet um I guess a lot of interesting like uh, people as you went around like so maybe you know you might be going out to the same location over and over again you might see an, an older lady who spends a lot of time at this park you know just and she's got some sort of history or some story to it or you know you meet some man or like did you were you able to engage with people as you went around or was it more of an environment landscape like sort of project to be honest it um, was very much like landscape and environment but yeah. Um, I've photographed people and they're also in the book too, but I like to be a bit more of a voyeur. Yeah. Okay, cool. Because yeah. then you catch people naturally. Yes. Candid. Yeah, yeah. 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 And I think like I actually have a section called streets. So I've just done like street photography and there's yeah. one man, for example, he's, um, oh, would you let me show you? Yeah. Yeah. I'll show you quickly. Open it up. Open it up. <laughs> yeah. So um, I-, I wanted it to, um, so no, actually no, I didn't come across uh, many people as such. Yeah, because there is that feeling of just people doing what they do in the city. So for yes. example, oh, this man cool. here. Oh, yeah. Um, like you don't you don't see this much anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And um, you know, all the guys just playing chess. Yeah, I love that. You one. know, they do that at lunch. Um, yeah. Or this, like, it's just an everyday picture. Yes. I'm sorry. Um, but 
I just liked the way that the man here, the man crossing, yeah. was like, oops, <laughs> everything's reversed yeah, yeah. Um, there. So it's a, it's a normal everyday scene. But to me, it's interesting because it's you see the relation of things together or... Um, compositions. You change, so many different compositions are changing and you're yeah. moving around them. That's yeah. the thing about the streets. You've got so much composition to work with. But it's also um, like the way that people fit into a city environment. You know, the people yeah. are very much a part of the, the city environment. How are they all the same? Which is why I did that in black and white. Yeah, I like it's, it. So, it looks timeless. Yeah. I look at that, that one yeah. with that person by the um, traffic light kind of reminds me of, I don't know, like New York, like Mafia yeah. scene. I don't know why. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, this is, yeah, yeah, different sort of scene. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's awesome. No, I, I really, really enjoy it. Um, you know, like to hear about the, the, the idea and the passion and the, the, the drive behind yeah. you know, the creator. You know, I think that's yeah. important. I used to get really frustrated when I was little and I would go to the art gallery with my mum. And I would like a painting or a photograph, but I didn't really know what was going on. And you'd look at the title and it was called Untitled. Yeah. I just get really annoyed at that because I thought, you know, throw me a bone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah like, give, me a, give me a bit of a hint. So I yeah. think, you know, and I think these days we live in a society where we're really interested in like what people are thinking about what's behind the scenes, you know. Yes. Um, it, it brings it up to life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I think we're, we, you know, we're we're a lot more interested in the real and, and the raw mm. and, you know, and that sort of stuff. I mean, reality TV is huge. I mean, but I think, you know, my, my opinion is that people watch reality TV in general to kind of, you know, <laughs> go, oh, well, at least I'm not that wild. But, yeah. you know, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> but I think in, in general, I think that the, the consensus, especially over the, the last year and a half, like people really want to see the real, like the behind the scenes, the, the, you know, not the photoshopped, beautiful, yeah. pretty, um, scripted, you know, delivery of information. They kind of want to see, yeah. well, you know, who's on the ground. And I, I, I always remember um, when I was young, I really got interested in to, um, Vice Media. Um, I think now they're, they're a part of another company, but they, like, they were very uh, independent when I was really interested in to them. Uh, and what I was interested in about was that they would go, to Venezuela and they'd be on the streets and there'd be these huge riots and they'd be getting hit by rubber bullets and they'd be reporting mm -hmm. and but they would be literally there like going yeah. this is what's happening you know or yes. another place and they'd be they, they were very much involved in it and, and they'd give different news you know and my, my grandparents yeah. would watch news for a long time in media and you know they wanted to be informed and you know I totally respect that um however for me I was like I wanted to see like you said, like more behind the scenes, more of what's going on in the world. Yeah. What's, you know, like this can't, this segment can't be the whole world. You know, yeah. there's got to be some, some, something happening in Venezuela or, or you know, yeah. somewhere else in the world. So I really liked Vice Media for that. And, and yeah. I love like photojournalism um, for yeah. that. You know, like people that go, they go into North Korea and they take photographs. Like there's one guy that went, went into North Korea and he took photographs and he, and he made it out. Um, but he's yeah. got this like collection of photographs and there's not, there's not, you know, a huge library of them. Um, uh, but like there's, you know, there's, you know, a good 40 images that just show you like, wow, this, this is a totally different yeah. world. Um, yeah. I really love street and photojournalism for that. I think that was one, that yeah. one thing that I was going to look into was like photojournalism, um, yeah. um, reportage sort of works, but yeah. you know, d depending on how my life went, I would love to go on to. Uh, the Middle East or different sort of places and just photograph these sorts of moments. And I always remember that story of um, the Viet Cong with the, the weapon at the head of the Viet. Viet. Oh, yeah, I think we learned yeah. about it in, in TAFE. And I think that was such yeah. a good lesson because that photo changed all of the, um, the US's kind of perspective on the war and really yeah. kind of ignited them to kind of pull out of, you yes. know, out of that war. So it's a, that when I look at that and the power of a photograph, yeah. that's what really excites me. I was just thinking that too, like that's powerful. Yeah. Like yeah. it's no matter how many times you see, you can't help but feel something. Yeah. When you see exactly. that picture. And yeah. I think I think maybe it all comes from a human need we have to sort of um, firstly like for images not to be so polished. Like I think we need to know oh we're okay. Yeah. Because every time you see images that are just you know, even say um, 
the models in the magazines, even they don't look like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, they've been so photoshopped, even they don't look like that in yeah. real life. And I think when we see things that are real or behind the scenes, it reassures us that we're, we're okay. Like yes. things yeah. are bad elsewhere. Things are bad here. It's okay. Like life is hard sometimes. Yeah. Um, or it's like, yeah, okay, she gets a breakout on her skin as well or she has bad days too. And, yeah, like so much of what we see is edited. Yes. And, yeah, sometimes like you need, I mean, stuff like photojournalism, that's some of it's hard to see and hard to stomach but at the yes. same time it's it's important we get a, a realistic view of what's going on and not like um did you ever see a good morning vietnam no no there's a section in it where like he reads out the news and a whole bunch of news comes in and sections of it are crossed out you can't tell him this you can't tell him that can't tell him that can't yeah. tell him that about what's going on in the war because yeah, right. they don't they don't want they don't want to cause people to panic yes yeah. and he's like you know a bomb just went off you have to tell people so they can get out of this area yeah, so you and they're like, lives. yeah, and they're like, no, no, like you can't say that, you can't, you can't put this out there on the radio. Um, yeah. So I always think of it like that. There's someone behind the scenes saying, no, don't share that, don't, don't report this, don't report that. Yeah, but we need yeah. to know. We need yeah. to know some of it. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think for you to be like a well-rounded, um, you know, uh, I think valuable asset to society or to your family or to people, you need to have a well-rounded view. You can't yeah. have a you know, I would say that it would be very challenging for you to have a view of this is my reality or only this happens, mm. only bunny rabbits exist, you know, yeah. only, you know, only, only whatever. As, once you become an adult, um, of course, you know, I want your channel, your children to think that only bunny rabbits exist for now. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you, you, know, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, like as you get older and you can stomach those sorts of things and those documentaries mm. and those photos, and you're right, because some of them are very hard to take. But yeah you know that that's a part of our world that's a part of that's a part of us all you know that's what's happening uh, yeah. yeah that's what's happening that's this crime has happened to this group and it's not only happened to this group it's happened to the, these 12 other different groups you know and and mm. this is something that we need to understand about humanity and we need to understand that if we just you know keep going along with the hate and saying you know all victimhood and it's only mm. it's only us that we're you know then we're going to just keep perpetrating that sort of routine. But if we look at it yeah. and go, well, we've got to stop this harm thing or we've got to stop yeah. this, you know, yeah. I, I think it, what we were talking about before about changing your perception, Yeah. you know, if you see a photograph like that one um, with the gun to the man's head, yeah. like how does that make you feel about uh, war and invasion? Yeah. Just, like straight away you're just yeah. like, okay, is this not right? Yeah, exactly. You know, there's it's nothing wrong. there's yeah. nothing glorifying about war or being a hero. When you see something like that, you're like, oh, okay, this is just humans killing humans and it's yeah. really hard to look at. So I yeah. think, you know, and then it'll it changes your perception, then it changes who you vote for, and then that changes the world. Yeah, you know, if you will. So I think it yeah, some things are hard to stomach, but as an adult, I think you you can do good things to help yeah. from saying that. Well, it's like, um, and I think that's something you realize with information now. I think if I look even back a couple of years ago, what, you know, what people, the options people had for, um, for, you know, like the amount of businesses that you would have in Australia that you could have as homegrown or platforms or, you know, like, you know, things like Patreon, like, like these things that come out, um, mm. like the diversity of them that you've seen them in the last few years. I think that's also made people go, okay, let me, vote with my dollar you know who mm. am i going to am i going to buy local am i going to support this thing yeah. this you know product or am i going to support that thing and i think it's made people a lot more humanitarian like yeah. sort of aware you know and and you know really thinking about it you know which yeah. is i guess which is a good place to be really yeah. considering you know is that right is this right is that wrong and working out well if this platform does this then i'm going to go over to this platform or if this platform, yeah. you know, I'm going to yep. support this local business because local Australian business is, you know, the heart, heartbeat of Australian's economy. So, um, yeah, yeah I, th I think that's, that's important. Like seeing those visual elements <laughs> really can enact positive change in a mm. way, you know. And when I see that, like when I saw that photo of that, I think when I looked at it, I just had this feeling of like this is no longer like a warrior or, or fighting mm. an evil. This is like just you're just culling one yeah. portion of 
you know, humanity. And then you're yeah. culling another portion. And it's like yeah. you're just going through and getting rid of this because they still assimilate with this belief. So yeah. we're going to get rid of this. And it's just, yeah, it's the tragedy. But I think photography really, um, that course, in a way, one of its side um, positive things that, that it allowed me to see was a real open heart to humanitarians and real understanding of our world and, and, and you know, what, what we've all done or what, what has been done on this planet, you know. So, yeah. yeah. I think, too, we, uh, we're quite enlightened these days due to the internet. I think because we know so much more, we can make different choices or um, because there are more options now, we can vote with our money and yes. with our actions. And, um, you know, I think, I think so much of our world is visual. Yeah. yeah. I mean, not just selling, but, you know, I mean, pretty much everything that is going on is some kind of visual platform. Yes. But I'm just thinking, um, yeah, it's kind of, when I think of like you see war images or um, things like that, you think it's just we're just going around in circles. You know, every generation sort of has their own terrible war and then the next generation will have their own terrible war. Like when does it get to a point, hopefully with photography showing all this kind of thing? Yeah. You know, it's been a hundred years of like how many more times do we need to go through this? People need to get killed and again and again. Like yeah. prior to that, say in the um, – I think it was like the 1800s and 1700s. Um, paintings and things were commissioned to glorify war. Yeah. And yeah. motivate cultures to go to war and fight for your country and your king and things like this. And we now mm. know that there's nothing glorifying about war. No. Um, no. And I think photography has shown that, especially like a lot of photos you, photos you see from World War II. You just like, you know, yeah, this is just like mass slaughter um, and yeah. it would make you feel sick. And I think that's a good thing. Yeah. Because yeah. it'll hopefully, you know, inspires you to say, look, no, 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 like no more. Yeah. No exactly. more wars. You yeah. Know, like- yeah. Like what positive ca- change can we make in this situation? And, that, and that's the beauty that I love most about documentary photojournalism is that you could accompany those photos with, with content. And, you know, it might be something about, um, you know, suicide rate in, you know, 14 year old, you know, girls because yeah. of all the pressures of, you know, being a, an entity of perfection, you know. Yeah. Um, so, you know, so someone might do photographs and, and show, you know, the heavy amount of makeup the woman's putting, the, the girl's putting on, or, or you know, and, 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 and really those photographs that are powerful, the ones that really exaggerate and show the extreme sides, you know. Yeah. yeah. So maybe for most people, it's not like that. For most 14 year olds, it's not, but it's really highlighting that, that, yeah. that culture and that, that, that problem. You know, it's like putting a, a spotlight over the like the tumor or the or the bug or the you know yeah. whatever's going on it's like putting the spotlight over and going all right we need to we need to see it visually first before we yeah. can then address it as a culture you know yeah, yeah. i think yeah. that's 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 the beauty and the importance i mean photography and, vi- and video and you know like visual elements and writing these creative elements they can painting you know it can create so much beauty it can create a, a, like your book is created like more appreciation appreciation for where you live um but then it can also have like such power like you said to motivate people to either go to war or mm. not go to war or you know or, or yeah you know think about you know the, these these social impacts that are having on younger generations you know? yeah and i think prim- uh, primarily even though we uh, are intellectual and we have knowledge and things like that ultimately beneath we're emotional people yeah. Even, you know, people that come across that sort of know it, completely studied and wise and intellectual people, politicians, whatever it is, ultimately people I think are just naturally very emotional. So, if, mm. you know, you do see photographs of horrific situations. You feel something yeah. when you yeah. look at them. You feel horrified or disgusted or afraid or, you know, you just feel something terrible. But then, you know, on the flip side, you know, I look at pictorial books and I feel so excited. Mm. You know, I see, um, I have a lot of pictorial books on Italy. I love Italy. I think yeah. it's such a beautiful place. And there's a lot of grungy places in Italy. It's old, it's dirty. You know, every country has poorer areas that are, you don't go to because they're rough or unsafe, whatever it is. Yeah. But, um, yeah, like when you look at beautiful imagery, it can lift your spirits. It can motivate you to travel to a certain place or um, yeah. pursue a certain thing. Yeah. 
and it can have the opposite effect. And, uh, you know, I think that's really is the power of photography because we, we also believe it's real what we're looking at. Yes, exactly. Yeah, um, yeah for the most part. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Uh, I mean, the emotion side is such as, uh, an important point. I'm, I'm reading a book at the moment with a, um, a gentleman that um, spent, I think, eight years serving in the army. Um, mm-hmm. And he said that he, you know, at the times in the army, you know, you, you had to be very composed and strong. But there were times where he just had to uh, walk behind the tent and just just to ooze out the emotion because yeah. it's just such a such a weight, you know. And even the most yeah. disciplined and whipped and trained and um, you know, like perfected in terms of physical and mental strength specimens, like they find they they also find it hard, you know, when 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 things get very emotionally overwhelming. Of course, yeah. I think I think that's our humanity is our ability to feel these things, you know, and to process them. And, I mean, all animals do have these feelings too, but I think as human beings, if we shut that side of ourselves down, Mm. um, we're shutting down our humanity. And, you know, if we're sort of coming back to that same theme of changing your perception and, you know, affecting things positively or deciding your destiny, it all again comes down to emotion. Yes, yeah. So, you know, we don't don't make life changes because we just think, oh, it could be all right. Yeah. You know, we make life changes because oh, I'm so sick of this or, you know, yep. oh, look at that. It looks so amazing. I want to travel there. It's all emotion. Everything is driven by emotion exactly. or fear as well. Yeah. I'm scared of, you know, this happening. So I'm going to make sure I do this instead. And, um, yeah. you know, so I think if we don't acknowledge that and we don't acknowledge whatever feelings we have, um, like they are guiding us in many ways if we interpret them well. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and behavior I think really besets action. You know, your behavior towards mm-hmm. something, your like like your attitude, your behavior towards something like that's gonna shift yeah. you towards yeah. it or away from it. You know. Yeah. So I guess to uh, finish up, I just want to ask you, Ellen. Um, well, one one important question for for the community: What does uh, deciding your destiny mean to you? I think we've kind of covered you know changing perspective and a lot of this, but but if you could, I guess, put it to someone, say, maybe a younger generation who's wanting to maybe pursue photography or write a book, something like that, you know, what what would deciding your destiny mean to you? Uh, Decide your destiny to me means being proactive. So um, I I often hear people say, oh, I'd like to do this. I'd like to do that. I would like to have written a book. I would like to have gone to America. Um, your destiny is not going to happen if you don't, if you're not proactive. Um, Yes. And it can be little things every day. It can be big things. Um, So for me, sort of being proactive, going in the direction you want to go in, that is deciding your destiny. Um, Yes. And uh, maybe the step before that would be just spending time with yourself and figuring out what you want, what you feel, what you want, what you need and then being proactive and taking little steps every day towards where you want to be and what you want to do, because it's just a matter of time then. Yeah. And, and those steps, those small steps adding, adding up, adding up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, everything is small steps, I think. Yeah. Really, ultimately, you know, um, like when I made my book, just every day, you know, I'd sit down, you know, I would do some more design. I would go out and take another shot. I would, you know, maybe one day I would just write a few lines and then, you know, after a year, it's done. Yeah. You yes. know, so it's kind of that, you know, if I I guess my destiny was to create this book. Yes. <laughs> and it was through being proactive. Um, yeah. And, you know, well, you had patience, didn't you? Because you, you, I think a lot, I think it's a big thing, a lot of youngsters and I know myself, like, you know, you can, you can struggle with the patience on something and you want it wanting it to be complete because yes. oh, yeah. <laughs> maybe you've got 20 other ideas that you're trying to complete at the same time, you yeah. know, and, you know, maybe that's a, a testament to maybe, you know, still try and be minimal, you know, even though the world is changing more and more rapidly, try and be a bit more minimalist with your, with the, the core things that you're trying to achieve because. Yeah. 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 I think we, we have to simplify life. Like I think we're in a society that tells us we can have everything. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I don't think that's true. I think we can have some of the things that we really want because this is not enough time in the day. Um, You know, I want to say, for example, in my business, I want to have three shoots a month and I want to make a book this year. Yeah. Yeah. So I I can't go traveling for six months of the year if that's what I want to do. You know, you have to decide what's most important to you. 
Yes. And then little by little chip away at that because it does get overwhelming and it does, you know, we do want every, I want everything. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm excited about life. I sort of just think, oh, you can do this, you can do that. And, you know, I've got eight million different ideas for things. Yes, but yeah. yeah, I think it's kind of like focusing, focusing on what's really important to you and then just little bits each day. Yeah. And then you get there. And then you, then once you've done that, then you move on to the next thing you want to achieve. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. The only other way is to have a team of 30, Oh, 30 yeah. Elwin, uh, you know, representatives <laughs> behind you. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so like, if I had the money, I'd outsource this, that, everything else, I'd just shoot. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I know, do the core things that you do, you do most well. Yeah. 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 Oh, well, that's awesome. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And that's um, really inspirational. And where can people go to uh, get a copy of your book? Uh, my book's on my website. So yeah. it's magnificentnow.com.au. Um, it's also available on Booktopia yeah. and um, some other stores. There's quite a number of stores in Sydney that has a, has a um, title books at Barangaroo, but magnificentnow.com.au, that comes directly from me. Um, awesome. So, yeah, come visit me. I have lots of other pretty pictures on there too. Yes, yeah, for sure. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're a brilliant talent and I really enjoyed, um, I think, you know, we, we had a close bond during, during the course and, um, yeah, you know, I did love, you know, what you're doing with passion photography and portraiture and we both had that commonality of loving portrait work and, yeah, um, you know, and we even chatted about some of the stories back, back then. So, yeah, mm-hmm. so I really i am an advocate for, for the awesome work that you do and I think the, the connection of the emotion and the, you know, the feeling and bringing the story into everything, I think, it's, you know, you've got quite a good talent mm-hmm. there. Oh, thank you. Well, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing your book as well. Yes, Is yeah. Working through that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be exciting, yeah. yeah. It's, um, yeah, like I think as well, just, just one more thing. I think yeah. it's it's normal to feel tired on the way because it's a marathon. Writing a book or creating a book is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Yeah. Um, I had many times where I just thought, oh, this is pointless. How am I going to get through it? But I just something little every day. And, yeah. and then you, you, your energy comes back for it. So Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think also another thing that I'm, I'm work learning about is being okay with the process. And, and, you know, you hear some people that, you know, finished the book in record time and did, and did this and did that, but you don't know the circumstances, you know, maybe they wrote no. a book on five um, you know, recipes for vegetarian food or, you know, very structured where yeah. for me, this is like, you're pulling something out of you. And it's the same thing with photography, like books that you did, like when you're doing that, you're pulling, you're pulling something out of yeah. you and what you are seeing and what you're, how you're interpreting life and to yeah. do that then you've got to organize it and that's the stage that i'm yes. in I've pulled everything <laughs> yeah. out. now i've got to organize it and yeah that, that's uh <laughs> yeah it's, it's it's a big big goal <laughs> that's a hard thing you know i think it's a creative mindset i always think that i think like a like a tree yeah so i've got branches going ever i've got leaves i've got ideas the yeah. hardest thing for me was like p- pulling it together in order to move forward and do A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Like some people work like that naturally. Yeah. Very structured. My, my husband's like that. He's like, you know, I do A first, then B second, then C third, then yeah. D fourth. I go start 70% of the way through and then I go back and do something at the front and then I pop back in 40% of the way through. Yes. Um, but it all comes together. Yeah. So I think we're it's your own... Um, it's your individual journey, but don't pay attention to people who are like, oh, you know, I slammed out my eighth book, yeah. you know, this year. Like, I think that's not true either. No, like, that, no. they would have had a lot of BTS yes. um, bad days. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that too, so. Yeah, and that's the yeah. beauty of us, like, doing this video and, and kind of this, you know, this community and then, you know, you being authentic with what you're doing. Um, I think it's really, really important. Um, so, mm. yeah. But awesome. Thank yeah. you so much for, um, for staying on. And I think the internet's just fading out. So, so it's a good time, <laughs> good time yeah. to get off. But um, really appreciate you sharing that, Ellen. And I'll put a link down um, in the description of where they can go and see your, um, go and have a look at your website and your book as well. And yeah. Wonderful. And yeah. No, do... look, thank you so much for chatting today. And let's do it again. Yeah. It's been really sure. good. There's a, there's a million other things I'd love to just chat to you about, but there yeah. was time. But yeah. Yeah, Let's do it exactly. again. Yeah, for sure. I'm keen. I'm keen as. Yeah, okay, sure. awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Ellen. Okay. And I will see you later. And thanks, guys. And cool. give us a subscribe, give us a like, give us a share. Check out Ellen's book. And yeah, just join in the community. We'd really love to hear, you know, your comments and you know, reaching out to us. We'd be more than happy to chat to you. So thanks, guys. Awesome. And I'll catch you later. And remember, 
decide your destiny. Yeah. 